Alrighty. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so my name is Richard Carrion, and I am the Director of Marketing here at Refersion. Most of you may have heard of who we are, uh, but for those folks who have not heard of Refersion or know what we do, uh, just in a quick blurb, what we do is we enable brands and merchants to grow their revenue using affiliate influencer marketing, and we help them do that at scale. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside, uh, but I really want to focus on something that's very interesting and very dear to me. Um, and essentially it's the name of the title, seven pieces of code that creates strong revenue driving influencer programs. But there's something a lot deeper than that. And I'm not here to tell you about how to increase your conversion rate by 0.08% on your store or how to grow your email lists. I want to talk to you something that's a lot deeper and something that resonates more with your brand, your community, and how that builds long-term revenue um, over just short term. So as you all know, we are in the middle of a pandemic and we all have something in common. And it's this idea of like wanting to remove this entire virus from the world. And we are in, a, in the world as a whole, we are part of this community of removing this virus. But communities themselves go beyond just a virus. They expand into almost every facet of our life. Uh, for those of you that are sitting in front of your computer, you are a part of this e-commerce community. We are intentionally coming here to learn from each other because we are a community that believes in e-commerce. We believe in the power of digital, yada, yada, yada. But with that said, what I mentioned is the, the idea of a belief system. And generally, belief systems have been traditionally associated with religions, but it actually spans, as I mentioned, a lot more than beyond just religion. Belief systems and communities have fueled movements, movements that have changed the world and have created equality for folks that did not may, may not have had that before. But it's also have driven some cult-like brands that we know and love today, like Tesla. But also, influencers have belief systems and values that they use to build and cultivate their audience. And brands are actually really taking note of this. They're leveraging those communities to tell the world about their brand. And so today I wanna to talk to you about the seven pieces of code that help you build a really strong influencer and affiliate marketing program. And a lot of the things you're gonna see here, you may be applying them to your brand today, but I'm gonna be bringing that to you in a construct that you can apply to almost any program in your company, uh, but specifically your influencer and affiliate programs. So just as a, as a call out, this is not an original construct from myself. This is actually a construct from a friend of mine. Um, his name is Patrick Hamlin. He is the CEO and founder of Primal Branding, which is a branding agency, as well as the author of Primal Branding. And just a little, quick little tidbit about this book. This book is required reading by all YouTubers. Uh, actually not YouTubers, excuse me, YouTube employees. And just a little story about that is there was an employee that was working in the influencer space at YouTube and was trying to identify how brands and influencers shared different aspects of their belief systems and how they were able to correlate that into a construct. And they identified this book and being the core pieces that actually connect these, these brands and these micro brands, which are influencers. And to give you the buzzword of the day, which is social proofing, we use it at our business, I'm sure you use it on yours and your store. Um, Patrick Hanlon has worked with some world-renowned brands from Levi's, IBM Watson, and of course, the United Nations here. And one question I have for you, when's the last time you said the word global warming or heard global warming? It's been a while, right? You primarily hear climate change. And so this construct that you see today that was built by Patrick he worked with the United Nations and helping them think about what that cultural shift was going to be from global warming to what we know today as climate change. So just to social, social proof this specific construct, but I'm going to take it from here and show you how these seven pieces of code can be applied to your influencer programs, but also give you some real world examples of both an influencer program, but also things that we know in our everyday lives. So let's start with one. It's a creation story. We all come from somewhere. You remember being a kid and your parents are like, yeah, our great grandparents are from this part of the world. And our parents, this is the how we came to be in the United States. 
And that isn't only true for families, but that's also true for brands. But that's also, and again, true for influencer programs themselves. And influencer programs that I've seen be very successful in building a creation story usually start with the creation story, something like this. We built this program because of our passionate customers that wanted to tell our story to the world. And so as an example, what they did is they built off their creation story and made it its own creation story within their own program. And so I'm just gonna to touch on these lightly, but I'm gonna give you some real examples at the very end with some performance behind those, those, uh, this construct. Second is a creed. So a creed essentially is what do you believe in and what differenti your, differenti your, differentiates your program or your brand from others? So when you think about it as a brand that may have a portfolio of influencers or ambassadors or affiliates in your program, you have to remember that those affiliates and influencers can promote any other brand that they're choosing. What makes your program, your brand more special than the others? And so having a belief system around that, what do you believe in can really help keep that attention on your brand and make those influencers and affiliates loyal to your brand as well. And so we'll talk more about Creed, but I got a couple of examples here uh, might be like a brand example would be Apple, think different. Um, for a brand like Refersion, we, uh, we thrive on this idea of helpfulness, not only for our internal employees, but for the customers that we serve and the partners we partner with in the ecosystem. So those are some examples of that. For others, for one example of a brand that we've seen have really great influencer programs is this idea of friendship and positivity. And the third are icons. Icons can be, of course, logos, which are traditional in how we see things, but essentially it's any quick association or flashes of meaning that are associated with your brand or your program. So some real world examples might be when you are getting on the subway here in New York City and you see uh, a, a face mask that's like, it's respect. And that ties back again to this movement of crushing this pandemic. Uh, when you look at uh, brands like Apple, you have the shiny Apple logo, but you also have iconography that shows the rim of the phone, which you know is specifically an iPhone. So those are examples of icons. Um, you'll also see those in influencer programs as well. Um, and I'm gonna show you some of those examples here shortly. And fourth are rituals. So I think we've all gone through this and, and I can't see the messages, but please like raise your hand in the messages if this is true for you. So I think we all go through this every day. You, when you're leaving the house or rarely leave the house, you grab your mask, right? And, or in the instance you're walking down the street and you forget your mask and like, ah, shoot, I gotta get my mask. And you're like, ah, oh, damn it. Uh, but in respect to that, that is a ritual we practice every day in our lives. And that's also true for brands. So for folks that are going to Starbucks, it's getting in line or ordering through the app or talking to your barista and getting to know them because it's your local Starbucks. For folks that might be surfers, it's going to get your board waxed before you go surfing or uh, cleaning it up. So, you know, every brand and belief system has a series of rituals. And for influencers specifically, they can have a series of rituals from their own personal rituals of posting day to day, month by month, or it could be something more infused into your program where you have monthly meetups, where you bring all your influencers together virtually to talk about best practices that have been proven to show performance for pro your program, but also for the influencers, or even just to get to know each other because there is a common association across the board. So those are a couple of examples of real life rituals for influencers, but also in rituals that you might be experiencing in your day to day. And five, there's no belief system that doesn't have non-believers. Um, so I'll give you some examples. Um, so maybe you're a fitness brand, it would be a couch potato. So somebody who doesn't necessarily resonate with your brand and is a non-believer. And it's important that you understand who your non-believers are because you want to understand what you are not. And this applies to your program as well. And if you're define what your program is not, and that will help you evolve your program over time, especially when you might see a brand shift and you're like, well, what are our core values? Well, those core values are going to live on for quite a long time, not only your brand, but your program. And you'll be able to build about around those core values, specifically understanding who you are not. And six is a lexicon. All belief systems or programs in this instance have their own set of language 
um, that are used amongst that community. So one example that my friend Patrick uses when you go to Starbucks, Grande, Skinny, those are examples of ordering that are explicit to ordering at Starbucks. Uh, for influencers, it's a like, it's a post, it's a conversion, the idea of engagement. Um, and there are also other specific lexicon that you would see within a program. Um, for example, some programs don't call their influencers influencers, they call them ambassadors or reps or affiliates. But again, those are specific to those programs. So you should consider when building out your programs, those types of lexicon that can be used and make them proprietary to your program. And lastly, as a leader, every great brand, every great influencer program has a leader associated with it. They're the ones that are spearheading the mission. They are evangelizing the mission and pushing it forward and pushing that vision forward and really inspiring folks in that community to move the movement, move the brand, move the product forward. And so an example in the real world would be, as I mentioned, the pandemic, you would associate Dr. Fauci as the leader of crushing the pandemic. Or in other instances of a brand, Oprah is a representation and the leader of the O brand. For an influencer program, it could be the CEO, it could be even the program manager that manages the day-to-day -day program. And again, lining out and writing these things out for your program will only help you better understand the direction of your program over time. And so together with these seven pieces of code, you can create a very compelling and a long-term influencer program that drives loyalty with those influencers, drives engagement, and of course, at the end of the day, ultimately drives revenue to your business, and it keeps your cap down because you're not having to reinvest in dollars in onboarding, reinvest dollars into uh, discovery of new influencers and affiliates. Those things cost money and take time. So keeping your current base in your program and keeping them loyal to your program using these seven pieces of code can really go a long way in the long term. So I actually met with a couple of influencers actually showing uh, two. I only met with one of the two that I'm about to show you. This one I met with uh, this morning, his name is Ryan. He is a micro influencer. He's based here in New York City. Um, he has about 25,000 followers. He was telling me this morning it, it fluctuates and it's it's exciting when it goes up, it's sad when it goes down, but really I wanted to talk to him about how he co decides to collaborate with brands. And the real key takeaway here is that it has to resonate with both himself and his audience. He's not gonna just work with a brand because they're like, hey, here's some free product. He was telling me about how he gets sent free products all the time. He's like, I'm not gonna post this. Like, why would I post it? I don't really care about yogurt. I'm not promoting healthy lifestyle on my, uh, my, my feed, I'm actually talking about travel. So the key takeaway here is make sure that you're actually reaching out to folks and defining what key verticals you wanna focus on and like what are those interests and values. But again, when you build up these seven pieces of code and really think through these things, that's gonna help you better be able to define that. But this is also true for the larger influencers. So this one, uh, her handle is Daddy Issues and it's 4.2 million followers. She's got really funny content, so you should go check her out. She's got lots of memes. Um, you know how it is these days on your phone, just enjoying memes all day. But aside from that, uh, this is a really great quote I pulled from one of her recent interviews. And it's really important for me to collaborate with brands that I believe in. I would never push something onto my fans that I didn't use or again, didn't believe in. So again, this is true. You need to make sure that you are driving this belief system with your influencers because that's a whole nother core audience. Uh, when we work with a lot of brands on their affiliate influencer programs, we tell them to think of their programs like funnels, just like you would with your customers. And you have to build that same belief system as you do with your customers, with your influencers, because again, they're doing this essentially at no cost up front um, or no payment up front to them uh, in hopes of performance. Um, and so you've got to drive that loyalty and, and, and really motivate them. And again, these seven pieces of code can help you move that needle. So let's actually th show you three real world examples. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each of these brands and I'm gonna show you how their programs, specifically their influencer and affiliate programs, map out to these seven pieces of code. And then I'm gonna show you some cool performance metrics on it afterwards. So just to kind of give you a quick intro of the brands, um, I would actually personally say that I personally 
um, have used Performix in the past. So I personally am an evangelist of them. But the other two, I don't have kids, so probably not the middle one. On the left, I'm not really into bracelets. But aside from that, Purifita bracelets, they're a, a, a billion dollar company. They started 10 years ago. They, um, they were acquired recently by Vera Bradley. So as you can see, growth, acquisition, a lot of it was fueled by these, again, seven pieces of code. And they have a great influencer program. They have over 100,000 affiliates and ambassadors on their program today. The Smittle brand is Shrimp and Grits Kids. Uh, they are a children's clothing brand based in Southern United States and a really cool brand that focuses on moms and children um, and community there. And uh, uh, in terms of revenue, we'll talk more about that at the end because it's really cool. And lastly, is Performix. They offer three specific, well, actually technically they have three brands under their house of Performix. They have a nutrition brand or supplement brand that you can see at GNC. They have a high-end luxury gym here in New York City called Performix House. And they also have a charity organization focused on veterans being able to uh, come back to the real world and be able to feel normal again after um, uh, what they have gone through in the military. But aside from that, I just want to kind of show you how these map out. So with Pure Vita bracelets, let's go through one through seven. We'll start with their creation story. So essentially it talks about how they, uh, in summer of 2010, the two founders went to Costa Rica, saw these really cool bracelets, brought a huge bag home with them and they sold out like crazy. And they saw an opportunity here to really be able to uh, give jobs or be able to secure jobs for folks in those regions that they visited by creating a new business that allowed them to um, sell their bracelets in the United States and to other uh, regions of the world. And their creed is focused on friendship and positivity. And their icon is this really unique logo called, uh, it's called their program is called Pure Vita Rep. And this is their icon that they use for the program. Number four, again, is the idea of ritual. And so when a affiliate influencer or ambassador uh, drives one sale or conversion through their program, they actually get a really cool exclusive uh, package. They actually get a bracelet with it. And what's really cool about it is that this woman in this picture here, she actually did this video. She actually did a review on the unboxing of this exclusive band. And so Pure Vita bracelets did not even pay for this. And that is, again, organic content. That is evangelism at its core. And again, it goes back to these seven uh, pieces of code to help drive that evangelism. And of course, five who are the non-believers, we can simplify this, people that don't wear jewelry, people that just don't like bracelets. Um, and then in terms of lexicon, they actually have a couple of key terms that they use for exclusively their program. So PV, so they're like, oh, I'm part of PV, which is Pure Vita. Um, hey, join our crew, so it makes it more friendlier. Um, and they call their ambassadors reps in lieu of influencers or affiliates. Um, and then the woman you see at number seven is actually the face of the program, so the leader of their program. This woman, you actually see in their marketing materials at the very beginning, all the way until onboarding. Um, so again, there's that idea of leadership. There's somebody physically there to continue that momentum and inspire you to drive those conversions for this business. So that's Pure Vita, quite a bit. I'm gonna go through the same thing for these next two brands. Um, so we have Shrimp and Grits Kits. As I mentioned, they are a children's clothing brand based in uh, the Southern part of the United States. And their creation story is quite interesting. So there's a woman named Megan and she was a teacher and she was tired of teaching, really wanted to be home with the kids. And so um, she really loves like pastel colors and, and children's clothing. And she decided to create her own clothing line of children's clothing. And uh, that they believe in or their creed is women empowerment, which is really cool. And they have their logo. Actually, what's interesting about their program and their brand is that they actually meld together where it almost seems like one, which is really cool. So their logo has a lot of continuity from between the program and the actual brand itself. And in terms of like the rituals, they have trunk shows and they have what are called quarterly drops, which isn't necessarily a proprietary term just to Shrimp and Grits Kids, because I know a lot of you direct consumer brands out there, you have your drops, they're exclusive, they're limited. Um, same concept here, but again, this is explicit to, or, uh, excuse me, yeah, explicit to their program. And then who are the non-believers? pretty simple folks without children um and some of the um, um some of the rituals that they would go through or excuse me some of the lexicon they would have trunk shows hostess which is what they call their reps or their ambassadors or affiliates influencers 
And their leader of their program is Megan, their CEO, who again is the face of the company and she continuously evangelized for them on their behalf. And lastly is Performix, which is, as I mentioned, has three products, but from a brand perspective, um, the way that their story was created uh, for both the program and the actual brand is that their founder was in the military um, and he needed a way to mentally disconnect from that. And he found that through fitness and their uh, creed is focused on always perfecting. And they have an icon that is explicit to their influencer and affiliate program. And that's called team PFX. It's actually branded, which is really cool. And their rituals every day are working out, taking supplements and coming to community events, which they host here in New York City at Performance House. You should check out their YouTube. It's actually really cool. And they're non-believers. I would say couch potatoes, people that are non, people that do not enjoy working out or just don't believe in working out. Again, non-believers. And their lexicon uh, would be focused on like personal gains, PFX, which stands for performance is how they refer to themselves internally. Um, they define themselves actually as a movement, a fitness movement, a lot of the time. So the idea of movement is a part of their lexicon as well. And what's really interesting is their leader, which you would think naturally be the CEO, but in this case it's actually John Cena. Um, and he's actually really compelling in his content on their, their YouTube channel. So you should go check that out as well. Uh, but the point is here is that each of these brands check off each seven piece, each of the pieces of code within the seven pieces of code here. And so what I'm going to show you is actually tangible results that these brands have actually seen to their business because not only have they applied these seven pieces of code, but they're also investing in their influencer and affiliate programs. Um, and of course they're using technologies to do this and automation. Um, and we can talk more about that later if you have more questions about that. But aside from that, let me show you some of their performance. So for Pure Vita, um, for their influencer program, or excuse me, their ambassador program, they actually relaunched that with these with core values associated with it, rethinking the whole tier system. And they actually saw a 300% increase in sales year over year. They also saw 11% AOV lift, or for folks that may be new to some of these KPIs, it stands for average order value. So essentially, what's the average amount of dollars spent for every order placed on my um, online store? In their case, they're on Shopify Plus. Um, but they had an 11% AOV, and this lift is in comparison to non-referred customers. So customers that were referred by a Pura Vita uh, rep uh, were had 11% higher order value than ones that did not get referred by a rep. And they saw a decrease in their CAC, which stands for customer acquisition costs, by 7x. That's phenomenal. And again, they aligned with those seven, uh, seven pieces of code that drove their influencer program. For Shrimp and Grits Kids, you clearly have seen these already because uh, it's been on the screen for a little while, um, but they saw a 40% growth in, uh, excuse me, 40% in new, co new, new customer growth, um, which is crazy. Um, and they also saw a 20% increase in AOV as well. Um, and that's not in comparison to their, um, that's not in comparison to their, um, to non-referred customers, uh, since most of their customers are referred, uh, but that's just a general comparison over time uh, from start to finish. Or not to finish, but to today. And then Performix, their ambassador program now represents 20% of their annual revenue. That's a huge part of their, or not a, well, it's a large part of the business compared to their other channels. It's one of the largest parts of their business and what's driving revenue. Um, and so these are very powerful performance metrics. Um, and again, the seven core piece, or seven pieces of code again, should be applied to your program because clearly the numbers are showing it. But there's, of course, also technologies that are used in this um, and platforms that help drive that. Um, but, you know, that's what I have to say today, everyone. Um, if I'll open it up for questions, I'm always happy to try to answer as many as I can. Um, but let's go ahead and pull up the system here. Cool, so let's pull up the chats, let's pull up the session. A lot of people here. I'm gonna stop sharing. Cool. Okay, so there's no questions. Yeah, there's a question for for Anne, but uh, just opening up to see if anyone has any additional questions around the content um, in respect to that. How do I begin? Okay, great question. So, as you saw, let's actually pull up the slides real quick. 
there with me. Thank you for asking that, Andrea. Cool. And I just saw another question come in. It was uh, talking about can that be equivalent to a tagline? Yes and no. Um, because remember, it's like, what do we believe in? And sometimes the tagline might be like, uh, the best uh, or like power infused. That really doesn't tell you what you believed in. Uh, that just tells me that you're like very intense. Uh, but what do you believe in? Are you trying to uh, drive this idea of helpfulness like we do here at Refersion? Um, are you trying to empower the world as an example? Um, and maybe you don't start with what you believe in. Maybe you start with what, what do you not believe in? And that could be a really great starting point. But let me go ahead and pull up the, one of the last slides here. Here, okay. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Yeah, so how do you start? So let's start with the brand itself. So again, these seven pieces of code can not only apply to your brand, but can also be applied, should be applied to your influencer program. So they can be an extension of your brand. Uh, but when starting, just get it on paper to start with. It's not going to be easy, but start with just some brainstorming of like writing down what comes to mind. So how did you start? Was it because you were trying to make money? Okay. That tends to be a lot of the times where people start, uh, but what inspired you for that specific product? Um, and if you don't have a story, come up with the story. Uh, that's, I've seen some e-commerce brands do that. I remember working with a brand and there, I was like, so what was your story? They're like, Oh, well, we, we thought this was profitable. I was like, oh, okay. They're like, but if you want to know the marketing story, this is a story. So, but try to be authentic about it. Um, there was one brand I was working with and uh, their story was it started on a tractor. Um, and uh, uh, it started on a tractor on the back of an envelope and a pen. Um, and it was a direct mail company. So there's some correlation there. Uh, when it comes to your creed, again, as I mentioned, start with maybe what you don't believe in and what you, not, what you don't want to be. And then you'll get a little bit closer to what you believe in and what you want to be. From an icon perspective, keep it simple. Uh, it doesn't need to be entirely unique to yourself, but it needs to be something that you inherently see in your business every day. And from a ritual perspective, it could be as simple as sending out a monthly newsletter. Uh, it could be as more evocative as a, um, a conference that you host every year. Um, from the non-believers, it's what's the ante of your product or your um, your belief system? And then what are some key things? Again, that kind of ties in a little bit with the product marketing perspective. So how do you define your ambassador, or your affiliate? Do you want to call them your crew? Do you want to call them a rep? Um, do you want to call them the street team? That's up to you. And then leader. You know, if you're a small person show uh, running an e-commerce store, become the leader. Um, that could be a really great place to start as well. Um, oh, great. Thanks team. Thanks for sharing that actually. <laughs> can Creed be the same as a tagline? It can be similar to a tagline, but I wouldn't say that it's the, uh, silver bullet to that. Like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to taglines, I've seen some very interesting ones. Uh, but essentially again, ask yourself the question, what do I believe in? And so Victoria says here, I'm an artist. My tagline is quiet art that speaks volumes. Okay. I could say, yes, that can kind of qualify as a creed, but again, is, is like, what's the deeper meaning behind that? Is there, is there a movement behind that? And how does it speak volumes? And I think that might be cool to maybe talk more one-on-one. -on -one. I, I will be in the networking session after this. So if you, uh, or if you want to just ping me directly, I would be happy to chat more and kind of brainstorm some ideas with you. All right, cool. So it looks like I'm actually hitting time, everyone. Um, we're at four o'clock and we actually used up all the time. That was a lot, lot faster than I was expecting. Uh, but anyone, uh, anyways, um, just to close out, everyone, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to me at richard.carryon at refersion.com. You can also find me on my LinkedIn. So um, I think the LinkedIn link in the, the, the session here is actually linked to our company profile. You can find me in our company profile as well. Um, also, if you are an affiliate yourself or an influencer, we actually have what's called Refersion Marketplace and it's free to all influencers and affiliates and you can sign up today and there's 
over, um, there's thousands and thousands of brands on there to choose from. We, I think we are actually at 20,000 brands on there today um, that have open offers and you can apply to them in minutes. And for uh, our merchants out there and brands out there, uh, we do also have a really awesome platform that can help you really grow your program and help you scale that program and measure the ROI on all your influencer and affiliate programs. So thanks everyone, I appreciate your time. It's been great hanging out with you. Um, and as I was telling some friends earlier, it's a conference I'm going to, they're like, what, you're going to a conference? I'm like, no, it's B-Y-O-C-S, so bring your own coffee and snacks. So at least you get to have your own flavors of coffee and snacks than the, uh, the catered ones. Anyways, that's enough of my, my funny humor. Um, all right, everyone, have a good one, and I hope you guys have a rest of a great conference. Mm -hmm.